viewpoints on the talk station FM 107 AM 1240. We're going to be joined here shortly by Rudy Rudolph, Cutter County Shore Protection Office. We're going to be chatting about uh, beach nourishment and water, which reminds me, I do mean, need to mention our sponsor for the evening, Advanced Water Systems, the people that bring you Connecticut folks that are practically reinventing water. You know, I was listening to a Connecticut commercial here uh, this morning about uh, you, you've lost that loving feeling. Well, in this case, it was you've lost that soft feeling. And it was the Connecticut uh, office there in Newburn commenting on how Craven County is no longer softening the water. Municipal water system. And a lot of people think, well, the municipal systems are, you know, fully controlling the water, softening it and purifying it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, that's not the case. They get it to the point where it's potable. If you want it to be softer, if you want it to be more purified, if you want to remove certain particulates in the water, certain minerals, things of this nature, it's up to you, the homeowner, to do that. All the more reason why you need to know about Connecticut systems. Of course, the renowned non-electric water solution, as their water softeners are known, as well as a wide variety of reverse osmosis water purifiers, and a particular note, the K5 drinking water station, and there's an example. Many times, municipal systems have contamination in the water, and you get bo- water boil, pardon me, boil water advisories. Well, there's an example, and one of the reasons why calling Connecticut is a wise decision, because the K5 drinking water system will eliminate that need. It will remove those contaminants. If you want to find out more, go online to ConnecticutNC.com, K-I-N-E-T-I-C-O-N-C.com, ConnecticutNC.com, or give them a call. Locally, Old Cherry Point Road in Newburn, where you might want to find out about soft water uh, systems just to begin with, if you're on the municipal system. Uh, and that number, 635-6222. That's 635-6222. That's uh, their office in uh, Newburn, uh, Old Cherry Point Road, 635-6222. Home office and showroom, Highway 70 East between Newport and Moore City, 223-4444. That's 223-4444. Or online at ConnecticutNC.com. As I said at the opening, we are joined by Rudy Rudolph, Carter County Shore Protection Office, uh, chatting less about water and more about sand in this particular case. Congratulations, Rudy. I see that uh, beach nourishment is underway, but I'm concerned. Uh, what what challenges might you face in light, light of, uh, you know, the weather and other issues? Because you have a very narrow window in which you can do this beach nourishment, do you not? Yeah, absolutely. How are you, Lockwood? Good uh, evening to you, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, and speaking of the soft stuff in your uh, Connecticut advertisement, let's talk about soft stuff sand. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there are some challenges um, uh, because of the biological resources, especially uh, turtles. In the water, and, and, and as I say, on the land, we have until April 30th to uh, complete the project. Great Lakes, Dredge and Dock, who, who won the bid award, um, they plan on bringing two different uh, hopper dredges here, and uh, they should be here on March 1st. So they have pretty much two months to get it uh, all done. Okay, and of course, it's also reliant on the weather because under certain circumstances, they are not able to to operate at all. Okay. Yes. You yeah. Have, we need uh, light north winds. Is 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 what we need. Offshore winds for for all the surfers out there. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, yep. Well, they they are not happy about that. But okay, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about $5 million. What is this going to accomplish? And then I want to talk about the governor's announcement earlier today about um, uh, money available for Atlantic Beach and also Cape Carteret and a few other beach communities as well. But let's talk about how this $5 million is going to uh, impact uh, uh, your beach nourishment plans. And then I also want to talk about what impact did this have on recent hurricanes. But first, what will $5 yeah. million buy you, buy us? Pardon me. Let's clarify Sure. That. Sure, and and the one note on the on the on the dredging, um, the Ellis the dredge Ellis, uh, Ellis Island uh-huh. is going to be here. That is the largest hopper dredge in all in all of America, and it was just built last year. So that's um, wow. So so, so yeah, so in a month you're going to see the biggest dredge in America offshore of a of a of a of a, of a boat boat bank. So um, with with you know respect to this project, you know we're really fortuitous in a way. Because we were planning on nourishing East Emerald Isle, Indian Beach, and Salter Path uh, about a year ago, uh, before Florence. So mm-hmm. we had all the, all the permits lined up, and we and we and we had a we had a cost schedule um, developed. So after Florence hit, 
you know, we sort of uh, reconfigured uh, the project, but again, we had almost everything else lined up. So, you know, to had to, to to get sand being you know placed on the beach maybe six months after Florence, that's a that was a really nice for us. So, um, I'm in that respect, we're we're you know really really pleased. Uh, in last year's budget, again before Florence, there was five million dollars put into the coastal storm damage mitigation fund, mm-hmm. and that was open for any 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 community and we you know applied for that and and got, and got that money uh the total project is about 20 million right so um once you take the five million dollar out the balance of 15 million um gets paid 75 percent oxy tax um for, again a designated for a beach beach nourishment which which equates about 11 and a half million right and the t- and the towns pay pay the balance which is about three and a half a million. So um, that's, you know, that's you know, generally the, a template. One of the problems, of course, with this, <clears throat> and I'm curious about the impact of, of the hurricanes on yeah. room tax dollars, because, you know, that's a lion's share of this revenue is coming from room taxes. So uh, that's right. What what impact has that had on your on your uh, funds? Yeah, well, it's huge because, you know, next year we want to take care of the rest of Emerald Isle. And also Pinal Shores, and 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 hopefully a little bit of a Western Atlantic Beach. So yeah, absolutely. So we're very concerned about the oxy tax. Um, it's been really weird after the storm. So we have obviously a reduction of you know inventory. There's also condos and cottages are damaged and aren't available, and also right. also hotels. But what is available was almost at full occupancy. Um, for a couple of months, because of all the all the, all the workers, right, uh, displaced families and stuff. So, uh, in October and November, you almost had full um, occupancy, even though the inventory itself was down. So, you know, we saw numbers that were up in October and November. Whoa! So, but the problem is, if the inventory does not improve by the time the summer hits. Then, then we'll probably see the see the real impacts because there's just not going to be as many rooms available as there were last year for the, for the summer, and that will and that's where the big problem will start appearing if that happens. Okay, and the uh, the other aspect of this, and want to touch on this for a moment, is the uh, funding from the state. Mm-hmm. Carter County has been a, and I always get the numbers backwards. It's a tier three county. It has been a tier three county. It was recently moved down to a tier two's county. What does Correct. that do to the county's availability? Avail- pardon me, ability to you know, or, or the formula for the county receiving money from the state. Um, it, it's um, I can tell you for the for the shallow draft and waterway funds. Um, there's a separate cost sharing formula for tier two and three, and then there's tier one. Um, so kind of twos and threes are, in, in, in terms of my world, are treated as, uh, as the same as, as okay. one. Okay. All so right. um, so basically it's 66 um, state, one, one third for okay. a tier two and tier three, and that moves to 75% state, 25% town uh, for tier one. Oh, really? So tier mm-hmm. one actually gets more support. Right, because they're more economically uh, uh, dependent upon. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about this in relationship to the upcoming biennium here for a moment, Rudy. And again, Rudy Rudolph, Carter County Shore Protection Office, with us this evening for a few more minutes. The biennium is about to start. Uh, we were chatting earlier today with uh, Representative Pat McElraft, and yes. she noted the uh, important and importance and influence of. Uh, beach nourishment and also maintenance, uh, not only of beachfront, but also uh, rivers and waterways, and noted the need to keep those clean so as to avoid, uh, well, the results of flooding and and jamming up of of waterway systems. My question to you is, beach communities, are they, you know, are they concerned that the state will be a little less supportive of such things as beach nourishment, I, I, I don't want to use the word, um, I, pardon me, strengthening, strengthening the beaches. I didn't want to use another word. starts with an H. Uh, strengthening the beaches. Uh, is, is there, what's the feeling? Be, because in the case of Hurricane Florence, 
the beach nourishment of uh, that you've involved yourself in over the past um, 825 years. How long have you been doing this job? Uh, 17. Plus. 17 years, over the past 17 years. Did an awful lot towards yep. protecting both property and infrastructure, which, by the way, just want to remind folks, while the properties may in some instances be private, the infrastructure is very much public. And we we see this in comparison to Superstorm Sandy, the value of you know nourishing and maintaining our beaches. Is that message going to be something you'll be taking to Raleigh uh, this uh, for the beginning of this session? Absolutely. Um, you know, you know, we do all these fancy surveys and uh-huh. things of that nature to show them everything, but sometimes the pictures with thousand words. And you look the day after Hurricane Floyd in, in 1999 before we did the bed pad, the oxy tax and the shore protection office and you look in Pine Mall Shores and Indian Beach and Emerald Isle the day after Floyd compared to the you know day after Florence it was a night and day uh, a difference. And, and by the was, way and by the way there's there's really not a fair comparison because Floyd was not as damaging to this county as Florence was. I mean Florence thirty six hours as you pointed out yeah. on several occasions by the way, something that I'm finally comprehending. Yeah. Uh, The tide gauge, which had originally uh, set the record with Hurricane Donna, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Hazel Hazel. and and, and I own, exactly. Okay, Hazel and I own. Okay, I'm sorry. Hazel and I own. Was exceeded not once, but twice during Hurricane Florence. That means to tell me that hurricane not only hit us, but (laughs) stayed with us to give us those two consecutive high tides. Uh, Uh, You got it. That's... And yet, and yet, the results of of your nourishment, um, again, to your point, night and day, uh, or even greater distance. So, uh, I mean, I mean, if you look at Florence, it beat almost any any type of storm metric you can think of, even down to like the amount of debris that was uh, cleaned up, the amount of sand that was lost, the winds, the rain, everything. So, yeah, I mean, Florence was definitely a worse storm than Ford, I would say. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> not in, not yeah. even at, at, no uh, having been through uh, many of them including Floyd no there's no comparison as a matter of fact all right we'll take a quick break on that observation we're going to get wrap things up here with in a few moments with our guest Rudy Rudolph Carter County Shore Protection Office we're talking about well a five million dollar uh, investment in uh, well I say a five million actually twenty million dollar investment. Yes in beach nourishment here in uh, Carter County. And I'm going to continue the conversation for a few more moments about a recent grant uh, released by the state, uh, of which a million dollars will go to various coastal communities. You'll hear more about that in just a moment here on Viewpoints.